Let's talk about some tips to make sure your trip down the Smith River is nice and safe. Let's freaking do it. Give me some space, it's about to go down. Cover your ears. It's Hello, I'm Jeff, and I do and review really cool stuff. So make sure you subscribe before you take off. Today's topic is the Smith River. You're not gonna find a lot of fishing tips in this one. There's lots of those out there. But what I really wanna talk about today is if you've never been to the Smith River or down it, some simple tips to make sure that your trip is safe and as comfortable as possible. If you'd like to see some other tips I did from about a year ago when I took my last trip down the Smith, I'll annotate it above so you can check that out. So I'm gonna use Google Earth here so you can actually see the terrain and what I'm talking about and give some examples. And I just think it makes a lot more clarity for you. That'll give you the opportunity to, when you get to the river or get to the area, understand what you're seeing and maybe you pop this back up and, and get a few tips. So let's dive into Google Earth. So let's start at the very beginning, which is White Sulphur Springs, Montana. This is kind of the staging ground, the last town you'll see before you make it to the Smith River. Many people choose to stay the night, their night before they get on the river here in White Sulphur. Uh, there is hotels there there is amenities there it's a neat little town so you start off in white sulfur springs if you want a last night of good sleep in a bed uh, that's where you'd want to stay a lot of people choose to stay on the river which we'll talk about in a second starting off at white sulfur so here you are at white sulfur springs you can see it's just a li neat little town a uh, great place to stay great place to get your last minute amenities everything does close down relatively early here outside of the gas station so you may want to get there midday so if you're missing a chair or something that you need to get at a, a like a sporting goods store sort of thing uh, you can get that still so let's talk about from there so the day before and you'll you'll get these if you draw a permit you'll see all this in the information they send you they say you can go in the day before and get in line for your camp sp spots so You'll want to get there the day before and drive over to Camp Baker, put your, your number down or your name down and get in line so that the next day, when the day starts, you can go, you can get your campsites and then you can get on the river. Now that's normal right now with the whole COVID stuff going on in uh, June of 2020, it is a little bit different, but this is, I'm just talking about the normal process. Okay, so let's say you stayed in White Sulphur Springs that night and you are going to head to the Smith River. So you wake up in the morning and let's show you what we have going here. So if I zoom out a little bit here, you are going to come out of town and you're gonna go down this road here, turn right. And this road is going to take you all the way up to right before the quote unquote Fort Logan where you're going to turn right. And then here's the little junction. Let me zoom in here. So as we zoom in on this junction, this is what the jump, junction looks like from the sky view. We'll take our little guy and take a look at the junction itself so you can see what that looks like. Somebody got their finger in the way when they're doing these uh, Google shots in 2019, but what you'll see is this is the Smith River Road, they call it. And this sign, I believe says Smith River Camp Baker, and it has the mileage to it there. Some people will miss this. If you're talking, you can miss it, but most people, it's pretty obvious. You will hit it there and uh, take nice right and head up the road to the Smith River. So zooming back out just a little bit here, you will take that road up here this is pretty country you'll go through make sure you're keeping a keen eye out for wildlife antelope deer elk a lot of really neat wildlife about halfway up the road you'll get your first look at the smith river you will cross it right here and it is pretty small water up here it's still a, a glorified creek at this point but uh, you will go up you're going to follow this road up You're going to go along these kind of this base land where the Smith River's at, and there's some farmland in here. You'll come up a little ravine, and here you'll get a nice little left turn, and it's a pretty obvious. It'll say to Camp Baker. Fortunately, there's no street view there, but uh, that is, it is pretty obvious. It will pop out to you. You'll turn left there. It's a short little probably half mile drive in. You will cross this bridge going over the Smith River with a little farm on the left here and round the bend to Camp Baker. 
So this is Camp Baker. This is the starting point of the Smith River. It's also where you will be either camping or showing up to launch. You'll also leave your vehicle there if you're being shuttled or somebody shuttling for you. Obviously you're shuttling in some way because you gotta get your car. So I'm gonna roll in some pictures of, this, of Camp Baker here from what I can find. I didn't take any pictures while I was there. I don't know why, but uh, so I'll take some pictures there. There's two launches. Let me show you those real quick. There's this upper launch. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger and a little bit steeper. So people, a lot of people prefer not to use this one and they use the lower one. The lower one, which I have a nice photo of here, is a nice easy back into the river and depending on the flows, it should be a, a non-issue for most people to put in. You'll park your cars along over here. They'll ask you to, this is where the, the actual ranger station is. And then a lot of people will actually camp in this center section here uh, the night before they're going to put on the river. I put in at this upper one, there's less people. It's not super difficult. You just back your vehicle over a little bit, back your trailer down a little bit and you're in good shape. You undo, there's stuff to tie off to there. You can move out of the way and load up your stuff. It's a, it's a non-issue. What I liked about it is if you look at this uh, from, a, from the sky view, and I saw this kind of when you're on the river, you can row out here and you can actually get this first run and you can fish this inner seam right here. Whereas if you put in here, you're pretty much gonna skip that. Not a big deal, but that's one more fishing seam that you're gonna get on the Smith River. All right, now we're putting in at Camp Baker. We are loaded up and we are on the river. The first day, day and a half is going to be a head scratcher for some people. They're gonna hear about these big, beautiful cliffs and Native American paintings and all these things that you're gonna see. And you really aren't gonna see that for at least the first probably half day to a day. It's a lot of open country. It's some farmland, but the river's beautiful and the fishing can be really good. So don't look overlook that. There's no, and since we're talking about safety in this video, there's really no issues with this section. It's just simple flowing water, depending on your flows. It is just going to row you down the river. Um, any craft should be fine. You always wanna look out on the Smith River or any river here in Montana or actually any river around, you know, for sweepers, uh, logs under the water, your simple things that you'll always look for in a river. But for the most part in the Smith, it's shallow enough that you're gonna see stuff way ahead of time. It's not gonna be an issue, whether you're on a, a personal one person, a personal craft or on a raft or on a boat, um, a drift boat, shouldn't be an issue. So you're gonna row down and we're gonna go to our first uh, discussion point here, which is a ways down. And it's not necessarily about this specific spot, but it's kind of a, an example of this spot. So I'm gonna go to the Tenderfoot, where Tenderfoot Creek comes into the Smith River. And you can see it here, this is a, a very typical thing on the Smith that has a lot of creeks as you go down that are popping into the river and it's growing as it goes, obviously, like a normal river. So here at Tenderfoot, you can see where the creek comes in. Tenderfoot Creek comes into the Smith River. Uh, if you zoom in a little bit more, you'll see where somebody is parked here. Some people like to do this and it is a popular thing on the Smith to fish creeks. So whatever creek it may be, park and walk up it. You will see a lot of private ownership along the Smith River. It is marked and they usually they clear, clearly mark it. So make sure that you don't do any trespassing, but realize that as of today, the law in Montana is, is that as long as you're below the high flow mark, or the flood plain, they call it, which is probably the open water, and you can tell that pretty easy, you're fine. It's not owned by anybody except the public. Uh, you can go in one of these creeks, you can either walk up the creek, or if the water's low enough and the high water mark is way up there, just walk right along the creek side and you'll be fine. So remember that. So right below Tenderfoot here is one example on the Smith River that you need to look out for, especially if you're on a personal craft. If you're on a raft with oars, or if you're on a drift boat with oars, it's probably not as big of an issue, but um, it's something to look out for. So you see that the river, and it does this quite a bit, where the river will come down and take a 90 degree turn. And at that 90 degree turn, there'll be obstacles. So for here, here, there's a big rock on the outside and a rock on the inside. If you're on a personal craft that you're not gonna be able to handle the craft very well or maneuver it very well, you're just kind of floating, this could be an issue for you. You could run into those rocks, you can get behind a back eddy, you can do a lot of different things. It's something to be careful for. It's not a huge issue, but uh, it can be. So on these, if you're new to rafting or to being on a boat and you're rowing a boat, 
What you do in a situation like this is slow your boat way down, you get on the oars and you get that boat going nice and slow and let that the flow of the water just pull you around, point your nose at the spot you don't wanna go and keep pulling back and let that water just pull you right around. Shouldn't be an issue. So let's go to our next example here. So I wanted to give just a quick example of camps and how they're set up in the, on the Smith River. They are spread all over the, the river, uh, up and down. People go at different speeds. There's some people that do the whole river in three days. There's some people that do it in seven days. Uh, most people do it in five days, four nights. That's the typical, and that's how the camps are relatively spread out, but everybody does it at their own speed. So an example of a camp here, this is a, a camp that I had stayed at, and I'll zoom out a little bit for you. But a lot of these camps are in a riffle like this. So the water's moving uh, pretty decent. It's not fast, but it's not gonna just kind of slowly take it to you. You're gonna have to know where your camp is and or see it coming up and slow your boat down. So there's a first site right here. There's a second site right here in these trees. And then there's a third site right here. I'll zoom in a little bit to show you just as much as I can. You can see where there's a spot on this third one, and all of them usually have this where you can get your boat uh, centered in there. Uh, usually there's a tie off at these campsites, so that is something to, to think. You wanna pull your boat up because the flows change quite a bit. Get your boat up, tie it off as well. Uh, you don't wanna wake up in the morning and your boat be five miles down the river. Nobody wants that. So make sure that you're tying off your boat. The most campsites, and they are marked uh, when you get your brochure at Camp Baker, whether they have a, a bathroom to them, quote unquote. So it's an outdoor toilet pretty much. And really that's all it is. So these will have, and you'll they'll be away from the camp. So if you're camping here, they'll have a little hiking spot that you'll go over to, and they'll have a hidden kind of thing where you have a toilet where you can go do your business. Make sure you take a plastic baggie that has some toilet paper in it. And just, I, uh, what we do with our group is we just leave that baggie over there. And so people do their business and we just make sure when we leave, we pick up that baggie and the toilet paper and, and head out. So that's a simple overview of camps. So another hazard in the Smith River is what I call, and I don't think this is the right term, but I call it pole water. So you have these big cliffs that you're going to be going along and usually it's open water or an open area to one side and a big cliff on the other side. If you look at this example, you'll be going down the river and you'll have these big cliffs on one side of you and open water on the other, and the river is pushing you into these cliffs. So again, it'll take a 90 degree turn like this, and it's pushing you into these cliffs. That water against those cliffs will, especially when it's stronger, higher water, higher CFS, it's going to be churning, so it can really suck you up against it. And a lot of folks that aren't on the oars and kind of pulling back, it can get you over and start to pull you against it and it can flip you. It, it happens, especially in stronger water. So what you just want to do is make sure you do just like any other obstacle, get your nose pointed towards it, pull yourself back and just let the flow pull you around instead of just letting yourself like bounce off and get sucked up against the wall. If there's somebody in the front, some people just put their foot up against, kind of help along. But again, it all depends on the flow of the water if you're gonna be able to push yourself off or not. It's not a huge issue. It's not something to completely stress yourself out about, but it is something to be aware of because it is unique to Smith River as something that you have to deal with because of those big rock walls. So going to our next uh, bit of advice from here on the Smith River, that would be heaven on earth. So Heaven on Earth is about halfway through your trip, plus or minus. It is a really, really beautiful place. It's a neat little ranch that has been there for years. I don't know how long. I didn't look at their website before this, but they've been there a long time. It's multiple family generations. So if you look at it from a sky view, you will see there is a... When you come down the river, it's pretty obvious. They have a big sign that's when you're coming up to it where you can get out up here above it a little bit, or you can go around the edge and anchor up right underneath, uh, tie off I should say, not anchor up, right up underneath of where it's at. So this is a little shop. They sell ice cream, which they're known for. They have two bathrooms that have showers. So if you wanna take a shower halfway through your trip, you can, I believe it's 10, 15 bucks, something like that. They also in the last few years have taken this barn right here and have made it into a bar not necessarily a restaurant, but a bar, but they also do food, mostly for their guests. 
it's a really neat thing though. Just get out, have a drink, um, take a shower, take a rest. It's also a go little golf course, like a nine hole golf course. So, you know, if you really need to play some golf while you're on the Smith River, there you go. They do have cabins. People, um, talking with the owner when I went down, People do stay one night there. There are people that do that. If you're with a outfitter, they're not gonna wanna do that. And I don't blame them. They, they have the best setup there is. But if you wanna stay there for a night, you can set that up ahead of time and it gives you one night in a comfortable bed between uh, um, a couple nights on the river. So um, something to think about. Really neat place, great people. It's just, it's a really neat deal. And the, the gentleman that owns it, he is a very knowledgeable about the Smith River. Again, he grew up there, so he it loves to answer questions. Excellent place to stop and uh, uh, stretch your legs a little. So our next thing will be what most people stress about when they go on the Smith River. If you go on the Smith website, and they discussed the quote unquote, the rapids of Smith River. There is a section, a small section at the bottom of the river, towards the bottom of the river, uh, that do have a couple bumpy spots. These are not high rapid areas. Uh, I think the, uh, even on the Smith River site, they categorize them as category two or three rapids, which pretty much means you could pull up the oars and go down them and you'd be okay. That's not necessarily the case. It all depends on flow. But let me show you what those are on Google Earth so you can see what they are. And hopefully, if you're stressed about them, you won't really stress because they're not a huge issue if you plan. So looking at these rapids, this is the first rapid, and these are about on the end of the fourth day, beginning of the fifth day. Uh, some people, in fact, stay right at the bottom of the second rapid. So you'll come around, and these first rapids will sneak up on you, and they're not as big of an issue. What these mostly are, especially in a normal flow of, you know, four to 700 CFS, they're kind of a rock field. So you're gonna pick your way through rocks and the water does descend pretty fast, but picking your way through rocks is the biggest issue here. So you can see these rocks poking up. When I went down, the flow was big enough that we could take this left way and there's literally no issue there. You just flow your way around all these rocks. If the flow is lower, you may need to go through these and it's no big deal. Again, you just point your boat at the rocks you pull back and you're good to go. Pick your way through. If you are in a personal craft, I would encourage you to pull off, take a look at them. And if you're in a tube or something that you can carry, maybe you wanna just carry around for the 100 yards that that is up to you, but definitely scout. So let's go to the second rapid, which is a little bit more of an event. And it is literally a couple hundred yards below the first. So this rapid, you'll come around the corner after that first set, literally 150 yards. You'll flow your way down and it is this right here. So if I zoom in a little bit, just to kind of show you what is going on here, you have some rocks right in here that the, you're gonna flow over and there is a rock right down in here. Really what you need to do is if you're, again, if you're just in a raft or a drift boat, you take your same turn, you do your, you line up your shot, if you need to get out, which I would recommend, and scout it first, do that, but find your line, get your, bait, your boat straight up and down the river, you'll bump right through it, and you'll be completely fine. If you're in a personal craft, honestly, what I would do is just pull over the side and walk around it. It's not that far, it's, it's a 40 foot ordeal there. It's not a big deal, not something to stress out about. From what I understand, not a lot of issues with people dumping their boats here or anything like that. It is just, a little bit of a rocky area, not a huge issue. So after that, after you get past that second rapid, the river changed dramatically. You start to get to the bottom water and you get out of the canyons and you start to get flowy water that really a lot of people, the fishing isn't as good, the water temperatures rise because you're out of the canyon, it's more open and it just, it's just not as good. They're still fishing. You can fish all the way to the takeout. A lot of people choose to, it's the end of the days. Um, you spend a long week. So I'm just gonna power out and uh, get to Eden Bridge. So let's talk about Eden Bridge. This will be the last event that we talk about uh, for this video. So after the rapids, again, you go through these uh, marshlands. It's kind of neat, it's pretty country. There's a, a few like sheep farmers out there, which I thought was interesting. You can see kind of how they run their operations. A lot of really neat stuff that you can, uh, um, you know, kind of see and look around at. But you're probably gonna wanna share the load with some friends on just 
rowing your way out of there because if you just dilly dally, it'll take you a long time. So coming up on the Eden Bridge takeout, some people obviously Google calls it Chaos Bridge takeout and there's a good reason for that. We're gonna talk about it right now. So we're at Eden Bridge, we're coming up on the takeout. A lot of people are in a group of 15, so you may have six boats or better. It could be maybe other crafts. So this can be a disaster. So I'm gonna tell you maybe the most important thing that you need to do by flowing the Smith River so that your trip at the end is perfectly smooth. So taking this and taking a look at this, you'll see it's nice flowing river up until this point. It's just no big deal. There's no events. Again, there may be a random tree in the water, uh, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have no issues. But you come up on the Eden Bridge takeout and there's these row of trees right here, so it hides it a little bit, so it can sneak up on you, although you come up right by the river or the road there, so you should get an idea that you are getting close to it. You come up on it, and as you can see here, right at the bridge, there is a riffle, and the water speeds up. And during bigger flows, that flow can be decent. So if you are not prepared and slowing your boat down, you may be just nosing your way in, and there's people that nose right past it, which you don't want to do. That's not good because there's really nowhere else to take out after that for quite a way. So my suggestion is, is when you are river right and you see the takeout coming, get river left, slow your boat way down, get on the oars, get nice and slow, slow your boat way down, ease your way into the spot, your rear end first, get your rear end to the to the shore, pop out and grab your boat. Make sure you're coming in nice and slow though. If you're going at a decent speed, you're either gonna bounce into somebody else or you're gonna bounce right past the takeout, which you don't wanna do. So just get on those oars and slow yourself down, especially if you have a heavy load. So at Eden Bridge, there at the takeout, or right up here is the host. Everybody parks their cars over here in all of this open area. There is bathrooms right here, which by then you will be very happy to see a real bathroom with real plumbing and everything. It's a wide open takeout, a lot of area for multiple people to take their boats out, but still make sure that you're on it. Get your boat out of the water while people are kind of sorting out. Go get your vehicle, get down there, get your boat out and do as little as you have to and get yourself out of the way so other people can take out as well. Pet peeve of us in Montana that people dilly dally at the takeout and the put in. So do your best to get your boat out of the way, lots of space to pull out, break everything down, do everything you need once you're out. Wrapping up, I'm giving you some final thoughts on some safety tips for the Smith River. Bear spray, bear spray, bear spray. Bring bear spray or a handgun if that's your thing. Either way or both preferably to keep yourself safe. There are bears, there are a lot of animals out there. A lot of stuff is just to scare them away, but you wanna make sure you keep yourself safe while you're on the Smith River. There is no cell service from Camp Baker clear to the Eden Bridge takeout. So you are going to have to make sure that you have, if you need, a way to reach out outside of the area. Personally, I carry one of those in-reach devices where you can send text messages through satellite. Some people have satellite phones, some people don't care and that's okay. But just realize that your cell phone is not gonna have any service through the entirety of your trip. There's a little bit of cell service at Heaven on Earth and they also have Wi-Fi there. So when you stop there, you might be able to make a call or send a text message, but um, it's not guaranteed. I did, I kind of had to walk up on the hill and got next to one of where one of their Wi-Fi places was. So there's that. But I would encourage anybody just for safety's sake to take one of those in reach to where if something happens, you can send a text message from anywhere, get the help that you need. Make a list. I made a list and I still forgot something. So make a list of the things that you need. If you camp a lot, make sure that you know all the stuff that you normally take camping and write it down. You'll undoubtedly forget something if you don't make a list. So do that, make yourself a list. And finally, don't stress about this trip. It is a fun trip. The camps are great, the river is wonderful, the fishing is good, you're gonna have a great time. There's nothing to stress about on this trip, it's only a good time. Follow these few tips that I showed in this video, you're gonna have no issues at all with your trip down the Smith River. Thank you for watching, please subscribe before you take off, and until next time. I